welcome to another episode of the Imperfectly Perfect Podcast, where each week I'm joined by some of the world's most renowned faces in the entertainment industry, on the sports field, corporate leaders, and inspirational thought leaders around the world, each sharing their own truths and personal journeys. Today, we are joined by none other than Carla Bonner. Now, you may know her as Stephanie Scully, the rebellious bike chick with a loving heart from Ramsey Street, a character and life experience on one of Australia's most prolific and longest-running TV series, Neighbours. Now, while acting Fedasol for 20 years, the exposure to an industry which can be brutal on your sense of self not only opened her eyes to the damage that focusing on the superficial can do to people, particularly young, impressionable people, it also brought Carla to her knees. While at times painful, she's incredibly grateful. It's that journey that has led her here to be her most authentic and fulfilling self to find her purpose. Her seg from actress to soul nourisher has been a natural one. She's now focused on utilizing that platform and skills she's learned to create space and share disciplines and practices to help you redefine self and cultivate awareness so the inner voice becomes powerful feedback to work for you, not against you. She's here to guide people who feel disconnected from self, from others, and opportunities that life has to offer or lacking in their sense of self-worth and purpose, and embark on the journey to identify where people are stuck, help them heal, unblock, reconnect to self, their innate value as a human, getting through this experience of life, and as a result, transform their life to one that they can truly live. First and foremost, welcome to the show, Carla. Thanks, Glenn. So good to be here. Oh, it's amazing to be here, and I'm so grateful that you've come on because uh, when I touched base with you, it was, I think it was one of your posts touched by, and like I said in your bio, a lot of people know you predominantly as Stephanie Scully. I grew up watching and everything. However, what caught my eye was this whole new platform of yours moving into the spiritual realm. But before we go into that, what I wanted to touch on is obviously everyone paints this narrative around who they think they see on screen. Can you tell us a little bit about Stephanie behind the scenes and what actually eventuated for you to move into the entertainment industry to start with? So based on the fact that you said Stephanie behind the scenes, show me, you shows me you grew up with me. Carla behind the scenes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know what I do need to say before we go on the other day when we was talking on a call at the end of it and I was like see you later Stephanie and I was like oh shit <laughs> I was like Carla <laughs> I know but you know I, I I love that because it's sorry I am sort of diverting a little bit but it's like everyone it happens every day and it's it's such an honor actually to have been such a big part of people's lives and to have been a part of them growing up and and um, it's really, it lends itself to my work now and it's, it's beautiful. So it's, it's really touching and I'm, I'm eternally grateful for the opportunity to have been able to be that for people. Well, it's been a huge show and a huge part of yours, but I suppose what, what got you into acting to start with? What took you down that lane? Well, um, I, it was all I wanted to do from when I was a little girl, you know, it was, it was all I dreamt of. It was, I would perform all the time at home and put on performances. Everybody would have to sit and watch me and, you know, set up the stage and, and um, I just sort of, you know, that's, that was all I wanted to do. I I got myself into the theatre group when I was about eight years old. And, and then when I was about 10 years old, I would sit there with the the phone book, like the yellow pages or the white pages Mm -hmm. and go through and look at the casting agents and just call them up and ask them for if I could have an audition. And so this was like 10 years old. And then I remember there was one woman, amazing woman, Dinah Mann, and uh, she was in Elstonwick. I was on the other side of the city and she said to me, yeah, Yes, yes, you can. So I, me being 10 years old, maybe, yeah, I was 10, jumped on two trains and went across town uh. my first audition. <laughs> <laughs> like I didn't actually, I didn't have a plan B. That was all I wanted. That was all I wanted to be. Um, um, so, yeah, when the dream was realised, it was, it was, it was mind blowing, but it was, it was that sort of thing of, kind of knew that it would happen didn't know how it would happen just knew it would um and I think my family were the ones that were like wow because I was always that little girl going I'm going to be an actress I'm going to be an actress you know wow so, yeah. but in saying that you said that you didn't have a plan b at such a young age so I think that's first of all impressive knowing what you wanted and you had that sense of knowing which we're going to tap into that spiritual side shortly 
But even when you said you got the yellow pages, the white pages, and you was looking in, that source of resilience to get started at such a young age, is that something that a lot of people still miss these days in getting in the entertainment industry? A lot of it is self-discipline and you have to put yourself out there because things aren't just going to come to you. Yeah. You got to be driven. And you, you know what the thing was though, I guess, I guess years later and uh, you know, really um, sort of tapping into self, I did come to realize that I was in a lot of pain and even from a very young age. And, and what I discovered was, I actually wanted to be in the shoes of anyone else but myself. And so, and it's really like, it's, it's really emotional. Like it's that poor little girl. Like I just, I, I would, I, I hold her. I've done a lot of the inner child work and stuff, but yeah, just to be anyone else because me as myself, I'd received enough messaging by that stage that I wasn't enough. And so I felt, I guess, to be playing somebody else, um, you know, and when I landed the gig on Neighbours, it was like in this family, this, you know, like this conventional family with the mum and the dad and the sisters and the, the brother and the dog and the home. Um, it was a life that I'd never had and that in a sense made me feel whole. Um, but, yeah, it was it. There was a whole lot of revelations and epiphanies that happened for me when I really turned it mm. But to find that self, that's that's really a lot of awareness through going through that experience. And then on top of that, to be thrust into the limelight, like with the noise, with everything around, how did you maneuver your mental health, finding that awareness to really enable yourself to go deep within yourself when on the external you was perpetuating to the world this character on a TV series with lights, camera actions, event shows, everything? Mm. Well, because for many, many years it was unconscious. I wasn't aware of it. Um, I, I, My actions and my choices in life were indicative of the pain I was in, but at the time I was having a great time it was feeding the wounded self, you know, mm -hmm. and um, so, yeah, I I wasn't, yeah, I, I was suffering, but to me in those days it was kind of normal. It's what you, it's just, that's just what happens. Is, you know, this is just normal. It wasn't until many years later that I discovered when I, I was in all of my shit that I was the common denominator um, that I really discovered how unconsciously I was functioning through life so wow see I love this and this is where it's going to change now guys so everybody knows the entertainment industry <laughs> now we're going to go deep because this is the talk Ooh. that I love so knowing that and you said you were unconscious a lot of the times for any of our listeners and there's a lot of people that want to learn more about personal development and the way that it goes I always say physical work mental emotional is hard spiritual work and working on yourself can get even tougher so how do you even or where do you begin um well for me it became this thing of these perpetuating cycles these patterns this pain I was in these you know just this this discontent like this searching externally all the time it got to the point where I was, I guess, you know, the universe, I was getting little taps and little opportunities to to start listening. And it, it did become apparent that the pain of, in the words of Tony Robbins, you know, like um, uh, the pain of staying the same was the worst, was worse than the pain of change. And I, I, I mean, that I heard that come from him years ago and it really resonated, right? And so then it became a thing of stopping and I made a choice to start turning inward because I there were always synchronicities that were going on in my life, always synchronicities, and I always used to find them very entertaining, you know, and it came to a point where I was like, I, I realised that I was to actually listen and act on stuff more than finding it entertaining that they were actually breadcrumbs that were leading me somewhere. And so, um, yeah, I just started 
listening to this voice that was, you know, the inner, the voice of the inner wisdom. It's, it's a whisper. It's very soft and gentle and loving, which is why we're able to ignore it over the bombastic yelling of the ego, right? So it's why, you know, we, we, we can easily ignore it. Yep. But I decided that I needed to start listening to this, this, you know, just, it was, I was continually getting these opportunities and, and I wanted change. And so things were just sort of falling in and I made this choice to, okay, I took hiatus from relationships because I was just, as I said, these just this pattern behavior and choices and things and, and decided to start journeying inward and listening to the voice. And when I did, the signs were just coming down fully and they were so powerful and leading me and guiding me to the next place, the next place, the next place. And it was undeniable that I was on the right track. Um, like, you know, even from, you know, there was there was this one day that I was, uh, I started listening to podcasts because I realised that what I needed was self-love because, you know, uh, I discovered the depth of my loathing which was really sad. Um, and so I started listening to a podcast. I found a, a great podcast on self-love. And so I plugged myself in and I started walking and I would walk every day and I was walking along the beach and this woman in, in my ear was talking about how cathartic it is to walk along the beach. And I was like, huh? I saw it as a sign. I'm like, oh, oh, this, is cool. yeah, this is the sign. I'm on the right track. And then I, I sort of held my hand up in, in gratitude and said, could I have another sign, please? You know, just to make sure, right? So kept walking, kept walking, and got to this point in the road where every single day I would take the right hand side. And so I ventured off down the right hand side, and the voice said to me, go left. So I went, okay. So I backtracked crossed the road back to that point, the fork, and and went down the left-hand side of the road and uh, the footpath. And I'm walking along and the podcast is still playing and the woman is talking, talking, and then she says, I hear, love yourself. And at exactly that very wow. same moment, I look at the ground, I look at the concrete and I stumble and stop at the words engraved in the concrete, love yourself same time right <laughs> and I was just like holy moly this is incredible and my, my you know it's probably a bit more I was I was blown away right and um I was gonna swear but I chose not to <laughs> uh, <laughs> um so I that was the sign this was this next sign that I'd asked for and I took a photo of it because it was just absolutely incredible so much so that I'm like this is the track this is I need to work with this woman she was American so I got home and I did my research and I found her and I got in contact with them and she has the path of self-love school and so I enrolled immediately and started training to ingest the medicine of self-love but to also become a self-love coach because I, you know, then we sort of venture into purpose. I knew that this profile was much bigger than me mm. and this became apparent very early on in the piece but the question was, what is it about? What is it? What am I meant to? What am I to do with this? And I knew how I could impact people's lives at a very early stage of it, but it be was becoming more and more important to me. Of, and the the messages I'd get, the fan mail, the you know, just the feedback was, people were really touched by the, the by the the connection because I yeah. I'm all about connection. I love connection, and this position within society really gave me an opportunity to connect with people and um, also a responsibility. Like with, with this profile comes responsibility. And so really tapping into that. Um, so I discovered very quickly in that, well, after that moment and started ingesting the medicine, which was filling the voids that I'd stuffed, you know, the gaping love cracks, right? I would stuff them with people, parties, places, you know, like, it's everything external and and embarking on this journey I was t ingesting that medicine and as you say it was brutal like this you know like turning inward it's not easy but and you understand why it's the it's called the road less traveled mm -hmm. but <laughs> it 
so completely worth it because I started stuffing these wounds with self-love instead of everything external. So then I was like, this is incredible. This is powerful. And this is what I'm here to do. This is what I'm here to do. This is what I'm here to help people through because we are all, to some degree, we are the walking wounded and we are to be in service to each other in this world. And in the words of Ram Das, you know, we're all just walking each other home and this is how I can be this. So this has been so important to me and, and purposeful and this is how I live my life and it's so fulfilling. It's more fulfilling than anything else. I can tell, though, because the energy just exudes. So people listening on the podcast, you need to watch the YouTube version, too, (laughs) just to see. Because my journey is very similar. And it's like you become this childlike because you found something that's like, oh, my God, if I'd have known this a lot earlier. But I want to touch base on that inner voice because... My friend, who's very, very spiritual, he sent me a meme once, and it was basically like, say God or whoever you want to say, coming down on a red carpet and literally speaking and is going, Glenn, that's what you're expecting. The inner voice is like a silent silent little voice, and Glenn's expecting like this whole shebang going, I'm not hearing anything. I'm not seeing anything. But (laughs) So how do you, and again, it's that, I'm going to go deeper because it's like, Okay, so you've got this huge show, you've got this platform, you've got all this, you've got so much noise going on. When you draw it to self and awareness, maybe meditation, I can only assume, and I don't know, that your brain is running on overdrive with scripting, with learning lines, with this, with that, with that. How do you center yourself? Well, back in the day, I this is before I'd started meditation. I will start. I will say, I grew up with my mum, who was a very spiritual, who is a very spiritual woman, and so that you know, spirituality was always a part of my upbringing. Um, you know, um, the esoteric, and I, but I never because it was so normal in my life. I was, you know. I didn't, I kind of rejected it. So um, so in terms of stillness and quietening the mind, I didn't have that for many, many years. So, <laughs> But I did have an incredible ability for um, a, an incredible memory. And so uh, in terms of, but, and I was also, because I was so devoted, dedicated to the work, to the craft, um, I would... I was I was committed every Sunday I would sit there and I would do my prep for work and I would I would do you know I'd sit there for 4 hours every Sunday and do my prep for the week and then um you know and that was my that was a discipline and it held me in good stead you know and I I I I loved it so every other you know for the for the rest of the time though it was parties and noise and you know <laughs> yeah. and, and I just allowed that right but um it wasn't until I I'd left the show in 2010 and then I returned in 2013 just for a guestie and then because uh, they used Steph as a vehicle for these, you know, um, conditions and uh, to raise awareness for, for, uh, for things. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I came back in 2018, so 2015 returned, 2018 came back. And by this stage, I had started meditating and I had started centering self and I had started needing that quiet stillness. And so, um, yeah, I had, when I found this mentor was when I really started meditating. Um, And so, yeah, it was very interesting coming back and being now because it was like, you know, 15 years later or 16 Mm. years later and I was now one of the grown-ups in there and I was watching everybody else and I'd been everybody else, all the youngsters. I'd been them. Yeah. I'd been in their shoes. I could I could see myself in all of them. But I was now the observer because even though it was kind of early on my journey inward, I was becoming more an observer of myself as well. And so, yeah, when you become the observer, you sort of, gives you that opportunity to get more still and more quiet. 
So, well, um, so I suppose I want to touch base on a little bit that that was brought up in your in your bio in terms of this whole entertainment industry and where you are now. When you went back 15 years later, what did you notice predominantly the difference being? Because as we know, in entertainment, there's the superficial part of it. Going in as someone older, wiser, what would you say to any audience members that are on that part of the journey? And hey, look. We can only talk from a personal experience. You went through that part and you said it was detrimental to you. So as an older and wiser lady, what would you say to anyone going into that industry? Um, to know thyself. To really, um, you know, if I could, if I could give myself any advice it would have been to embark you know in one in one sense I had to go through what I had to go through to be who I am today uh -huh. but um I also believe that our greatest superpower is to know thyself self-awareness and um to be able to you know cultivate this relationship to self so that uh, one, you can handle the rejections that the industry is notorious for, the, the auditioning and the, you know, getting so close and then bombing out. So being able to hold yourself and use that as a learning experience every time and take it into the next audition, but also to be able to hold yourself when you experience the wins because when you win an audition, a role, you have so much wind blown up your ass that, you know, you can lose yourself in that. And then, um, you know, and then if you don't even have a grip on who you are to begin with, that becomes really messy and that's what happened for me. But then, you know, there's always going to be a crash, like either professionally, personally, you know, life's going to find a way to bring us to our knees. And so to know thyself, to know how you show up, to have... Um, you know, views um, and, yeah, self-awareness is so, it's essential, it's crucial. So what would you say, and I ask this to every every person that comes on the show, through everything that you've learned, what does being imperfectly perfect mean to you? <sighs> um, imperfectly perfect means to me uh, acceptance of self and where I'm at and present in, in each moment, you know, but you can still be a masterpiece and a work in progress simultaneously. Um, and so it's the acceptance of that, I think, and just always being open to not knowing what you don't know and being open to learn more. I mean, I am just this perpetual student of life. I just want, I just love absorbing the knowledge and excited because I have a whole lifetime to go to. Yeah. And I think so, that what you touched on there, it, it is when you go on this journey, isn't it? You just lead by humility because we don't know what we don't know. But I suppose no. you now have moved into this realm. Can you just take us a little bit deeper about like you're working with a lot of people internationally? Tell us a little bit more about what you do, because I spoke in your bio about taking people through how to tap into that inner voice, but it's always better to come from the person who does it because of the passion and energy behind it. Mm, yeah. Well, I think that, you know, so many of us are walking around um, wounded and settling and unconscious and just repeating these cycles in life and and, and seeing that as normal and that's my lot in life and and, you know, and not not dreaming and not, um, you know, just staying on this one level and um, and repeating these cycles because you're not aware of what's going on. So when I'm working with people, it's about identifying the blocks, you know, because we're stuck in, in areas, right? And so it's get it about getting unstuck, identifying the blocks and then, like, you can't heal what you can't see. So the first thing is to be able to see it. And then, um, you know, it's about forgiving of self for, you know, the choices that you've made because we can be, it can be more, it can be more difficult to forgive ourselves than it can be to forgive someone else that's done the worst things to us. You know, it, we can really own worst enemy. 
So it's it's about that. And then it's about, you know, empowering with the knowledge of, of things like self-responsibility, like take responsibility for the ways that you show up in every situation, in every moment, because it doesn't matter what someone has done to you. It's what it's it's how you respond to this. And when you're doing the work, you become responsive rather than reactive because you have you realize you have these choices. And it's empowering when you realize that um, I it's my choice how I respond to this situation here. Because, you know, so again, unconsciously we give all our power to somebody and we blame, we're caught up in the blame game and they did this, so I'm gonna be like this. When you just flip that and you go, yeah, well, they did this. And so you, when you, as you come to know thyself, you can also know others as well. So you're able to see what is going on for them because hurt people hurt people. People that do this to you, they can't be happy and healthy, you know, like it's, it's not, it doesn't work like that. So with that awareness, you can choose how you respond to this. And, and also then it's about how that's going to make you feel like how you know, the frequency that you're vibrating on and, you know, speaking to somebody um, violently or something, like does that make you, actually how does that feel in your body? How, how is that restful for you mentally? Is it, and it's not, like I, I well, for me it, it's not. And so being able to take your power back through responsibility, that's a big one. Um, is really empowering. So it's about showing people how to do that and that's through disciplines and, um, you know, awareness and exercises and, and tools. So it's, and it's so freeing. It's, and it, and it opens you up to living a life, creating a life that, that is harmonious and, and connected to your joy. Like you can tap into that instead of someone's run off with my joy. I can't be happy because they've done that. Like, no, no, you cultivate this connection. You are always, you or it's always available to you. And I think this is where people fall short is they, it's off in the external, but it's not. So helping people to realize this is, it's, yeah, it is. The energy is just insane because it's <laughs> everything that I've been through. I just feel everything that you're saying. I'm going, yep, went through that, went through that. And you're just like, <laughs> oh my God. When you meet people, it's like you can chat like you've known each other for ages because you're on that different frequency. There's, like, there's no yeah. airs and graces. There's no compete, compare, judge. There's none of that. It's just like you've got to keep chipping away, haven't you? And that's why I say it is the hardest thing because you literally have to let go of everything you thought was right when it's wrong. And they often say the people that you attract in this habitual cycle, these patterns are a reflection of something that's going on inside of you as well. Now that's quite hard when someone's attacking you because you're like, I don't normally attack people, but then you have to try and subconsciously tap in and go, well, what is it and why? Oh, this is a test. So I see things as tests now and go, okay, that's why they keep showing up. Absolutely. But you know what happens, and, and I can speak to that too, because, you know, you would try and and make, you'd want to change them, right? You know, you'd want to make them fit. But, but with this awareness that you cultivate, you go, okay, so where I used to try and mould myself even, to, to make this work with this person who's treating me so badly, how do they fit in my life? Like how to, you know, do I want that in my life? You know, but and when you start, um, when you start valuing yourself and the energy that you allow in and knowing that that not everybody is deserving of your energy, um, that's where you also can measure the growth as well because you can go, I used to let that person in because I felt that I deserved that, you know, in some way. I wouldn't go, oh, I deserve this, so I'm going to let it. You would try and find ways to make it fit into your life because subconsciously you thought that was the best you were going to get, you know, or that 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 was okay that people treat you like that because of the the, the lack of self-worth 
I'm going to ask you because, um, again, it's attesting to this. Angelica Bridges, who I built a great friendship in, in NLA with, she said something to me that was so profound. It's like, if you continue walking on a righteous path, you know in your heart that you're doing the right thing. When people go low, you go high. And that's how you keep leading by humility, keep walking. So what's the best piece of advice or wisdom that you've been given? It is, I think it comes back to that know thyself, like, you know, like really um, have have this awareness around yourself and those things that you are, that you do settle for and and make make choices based on that. All of these, all of this comes from self-observation and, and um, you know, like if I'm comparing myself to someone, in, instead of getting caught up in that comparison, which is the ultimate thief of joy, um, I can then, there's that mechanism within me that says, hang on, you are, you know, look at what you're doing here. And so it creates that space between you and it and you're not it, you're not identifying with this this person that you feel is is less than someone else. Yeah, yeah. I think that's when you also, you, you know, when they, they start saying like when you move into the spirit, you get the discernment and you start learning about the ego and that comparison thing. I think I always yeah. say to people that comparison, I said, this is why I love IPC, talking to people in entertainment, sports, corporate, that we often have this narrative about and go, you know what, if we actually knew what they had gone through, you wouldn't compare. You'd be clapping the loudest because what your success might be, you might not have reached yours yet, but it's coming. Somebody might have got it earlier, but yet we don't know what went on in their earlier life, trauma, whatever. And then you'll be clapping the loudest. And then you start removing that judgment and that comparing because you're like, oh, well, would you have wanted to step into my shoes whilst I was going through this to get to this part? Maybe yeah. not. But I'm going to finish it and say Les Brown once said, the story you were sat on, somebody out there is waiting to hear. What are your hopes for what you're doing now? Oh, gosh, um, I just, you know, you say you want to impact everyone in the world, but you don't. It's, it's you know, I'm not trying to reach everyone. It's about those that are aligned, those that are awakened and ready to, and, and that resonate with me. I mean, you know, you and I could be saying the same thing and, and people don't resonate with me, but they do you. You know, like it's, we are, we're, we're tribe and we're here to, um, to, to help um, with this evolution of consciousness and, you know, to, for people to, to, to be these, these light, you know, to be the light for people. So it's, you know, I, I'm, I'm honored to be here to, for those that, that resonate with my voice, my, you know, the message that I'm channeling, cause it's not about me either. It's just like, I've been chosen and, and I'm doing the work. And so, um, yeah, like as many as 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 many as. Well, you're getting the downloads, and I love that because that's something that I keep on. I get words to the front of my head, and I tell people, and then they confirm them. But I have to learn not to go in my logic because that's the ego. And every time something comes up, I'm like, oh, no, no, no. So if I message you in a couple of days and say, "Oh, this was coming through," <laughs> you'll have to confirm, yeah. like. I'd love to say something to you when you said discernment before, like I was in meditation last year and I was, I was in a, in a situation and I got the download, I got the word discernment and I had attributed that to somebody else and their experiences, of what they were going through at the time. And even though with all of the stuff I've learned about self-responsibility and showing up and those who blame, you know, like they're, it's, it, it's, you know where they're at to be blaming others um and i i thought this message was for somebody else and so i relate it to this other person i then uh had more experiences with this person and and actually got it was like a sledgehammer came and smashed me because that was that message that word discernment was for me about that person right? wow. <laughs> I and it was so powerful and I and I'd said I just get discernment discernment you know and I'd I'd given my reasons for why and what I thought it was about and I'd explained it to this person it was for me 
So you do still have these moments of lapse when you get caught up in in situations. Um, but that was a that was that was a powerful reminder. That's um, <laughs> literally a slap in the face. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But we, we learn, yeah. don't we? We learn, don't we? Well, where can people find out more information about you, your website? Where can people find out about coaching with you? Yeah, sure. Well, look, my website's under construction at the moment. We're sort of going through a bit of an upgrade, which is um, love it. But um, so at this point, sort of just through Instagram, because, yeah, contact me through Instagram, Carla Bonner 3 just for the time being, but um, I've been given the opportunity to do is is share what I've been through, how I've overcome, and, you know, and they that will be tools for other people and, as they say, a survival guide for others, how we've, how we've overcome. And I'd, I'd love to, I'd love to have the conversation with anybody that's actually ready to do the work is ready to, you know, make that commitment to self because it's really, it's it's it's, we there's this weird thing where committing to our we'll commit to other things before we commit to ourselves and our own you know and our own growth. So, I don't work with everyone. Like I do get a lot of inquiries, and it's not fluff and it's not flaky and it's not for the lighthearted you know it's 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 the real work it's life inventory and it's it's you know dark night of the soul stuff but i'm here to hold support reflect and um and would love to work with those who are really sincerely and once we yeah once we do step into that space then we can be we can be that for others so we need more people to be stepping up and stepping into who they're here to be. Yeah. Basically, guys, she's going to say she's not here to be your best friend because this is one of the hardest things you are ever going to have to go through. She's going to guide you. And I can only say it will be one of the best things that you've ever done because even though I feel that I've come to the other side more, it's still a work in progress, isn't it? So I think that oh. is the discernment as well when you start noticing people calling themselves experts and you're like, there's no room for growth if you're calling yourself an expert. So you've still got continual growth, especially on this path. Make sure that you find out all the information for Carla. I'm going to get all the links up where you can find her. But remember, the main thing about Imperfectly Perfect campaign is keep having the hard conversations because it is the hard conversations that save lives.